I presented my arguments for why you should take the time to build a solutions architecture document in the previous video of this series, but it's in this one that we start together creating a real SAD using a real example that I would use in real life. And by the way, you don't need to have the title of a solutions architect to build a solution architecture document. You know, if you're currently a developer aspiring to become an SA, you know, creating a SAD is a very compelling argument to show them you got what it takes. I currently work with Essence.com, a high-end luxury online retailer with a unique point of view on fashion and culture. You know, the place you go to to spend $700 on a pair of socks. So let's just say for the sake of this exercise that a product manager presents a compelling argument for Essence to start selling luxury cars as well. Let me add that this is completely fictional and by no means I'm speaking on behalf of Essence, but let's just say that one day I find this request on my desk, so I start building my solution architecture document. And the number one component I will include in the document is the business view. And that's because architecture design is all about addressing business concerns and solving business purposes. So I always start my SAD by writing the value proposition of the overall solution. And this is also where I'll provide a brief description of the business capabilities for which the solution is being designed. You know, I, I will also add uh, business requirements as well. And, and I usually end up the document by including a list of various stakeholders and other resources required to execute the projects. And by all means, if you have any resource that is related to business, this is a good place to add it there. Second, I work on figuring out the process view. Some architects use a state diagram, others prefer a sequence diagram. I personally prefer to use a BPMN, the business process model and notation. You know, it's just a notation that offers a simple uh, yet a powerful way to showcase how the key processes of the system work together. And here's an example of a BPMN I built for this video following the fictional use case. And by the way, you can download a folder that contains all these elements and I'll put link and details in the description. So let's go through this process view. And my goal is to give you an example of uh, using the BPMN notation uh, to build a process view. And remember, we're not solutioning here. Our goal is to pretty much understand how the different departments in the company or how the different services would interact between each other and how that, does the business see this uh, solution from a process perspective and from a data flow perspective. Yeah, and some people like to have uh, the BPMN horizontal like this. Maybe it's better, maybe it's easier to go through it in a horizontal way. I prefer to have it in a vertical way. Do whatever works for you. So we start with the customer going, sending a request for a car, right? Through our website, it can be through a form, it can be a search, it can be a category, gallery, whatever. That's not important for now. But what happens is that the sales department would receive that request. Again, it could be an email, it could be a database notification. You know, we're not solutioning um, right now. And so it receives the request, then they record the order. And at this point, we want to check whether we have uh, a car in the warehouse that corresponds to the one that was requested, right? You can probably argue that we shouldn't even show a car in the website if there's none in the warehouse and you're asking the right question because that's exactly why we do this process view so you can understand the uh, data flow and you can understand and you can come up with, with answers to all these kind of questions. So let's say for the sake of this exercise, actually it's after the order is made that we uh, check the warehouse whether the car is available and it can be for all kind of reason, uh, uh, regulation, I don't know, supply chain issues, whatever. If there's no car in the warehouse, well, we will inform the customer, right? It can be through an email or whatever. If yes, if one or more car is available, then the request gets forwarded to the financing department that starts the financing process. And so pretty much we'll ask the our customer for documentation that the customer needs to prepare and send, check, ID, whatever stuff is required for financing in your country. Again, going through this process will push you to talk with the financing people and delivery people and, and sales people and marketing people and understand all these kind of things that they are not really technological, but they will tremendously influence 
your technical solution when you start building it. Um, let's say the customer will prepare the uh, documents, we'll send them back, our financing department will finalize the verification, apply for financing, then the customer has to confirm the payments, um, then the financing people issue an invoice, the customer confirm the reception of that invoice, and then maybe the, at that point, car is going to be delivered. Maybe it's going to be a delivery directly to the customer's house. Uh, what if we need the customer to come back to our warehouse to take delivery of their car? There's, again, all kinds of questions, all kinds of rules that we definitely need uh, to play with. And then at the end of the day, the customer would acknowledge the receipt of their car. Again, a simple exercise. We just built a simple, really straightforward process view. Yours is gonna be more complicated, but this is just an example of what you can add in the process view of your solution architecture document. Next, I create a new document specifically for the non-functional requirements, which basically describes how the new solution should be, you know, at a, at a very high level. And my NFR document uh, usually touch on scalability, which basically how can the application scale as workloads fluctuate? For example, scale from 1,000 transactions per second to 10,000 transactions per second in a, in, a, in a given day or in a given week. I add availability and reliability and a bunch of other properties that I extensively talked about in the non-functional requirement dedicated video. So make sure to check that out. Now at this point, I'm feeling confident. I got enough understanding of the problem to move away from the discovery phase to the solutioning phase. Because, you know, until this point, all we were doing was pretty much trying our best to understand the problem from various angles and how it affects the different stakeholders and the different pillars uh, in the company. So now it's about time we will start building a conceptual solution overview that provides an abstract level diagram that captures the big picture view of the whole solution. And this is an easy one. Let's start from the left. Customers can interact with this feature through either their mobile app, website, or they can just go to the store, the mobile app, and the website then forwards all the requests to API Gateway. Whereas if you go to the storefront, we will be using our point of sale app. And these three clients use pretty much the same backend services, which are the search service, account service to handle everything that is authentication authorization, payment service, inventory service, you know, just a few that I've put in this one. All these services forward their data to the data lake for persistence, for analytics, for archiving, for auditing, for all kinds of stuff. And we've had a few other services that consume either data directly from the data lake or interface with these backend services. The goal of this conceptual architecture is to provide a good understanding of the overall architecture for both business and technical users. However, Technical users need further architectural depth. So let's dive deeper into the solution architecture in the next section. And that's gonna be in the next video. So make sure to give this one a like and click here to watch it.